Again, for those who just joined, my name is Marissa. Uh, I am streaming from my house in Northside, Cincinnati. I am the Program and Partnerships Team Leader for Girl Scouts of Western Ohio. And today we are going to be working on Brownie at My Family Story Badge. And I can't lie, uh, you all are in for a treat because this is one of my favorite badges out of all of the badges we have. And why do you ask? Because I love my family. I love exploring my family, learning, um, where everyone came from and what makes my family unique. And I love learning about other people's families too. So with the Brownie My Family Story Badge, we are gonna be working on steps one and three today, but I'll go ahead and share what all five of them are. And if you need any um, direction with uh, remembering what those badge steps are, it looks like my Girl Scouts of Western Ohio buddy just pinned those in the comments. So she will be monitoring uh, those to make sure that all of your questions get answered as we kind of chug along through this. So. For step one, we are going to explore a family story. So to earn the full step of this badge, you do need to explore two family stories. So we'll be completing part of this today because I will share a little bit more about my family and you'll kind of get to learn uh, what makes my family unique. Uh, then for number two, uh, you'll have to learn about where your family is from. So I'll share a couple easy tools uh, to teach you how to do this. It's super easy, as easy as picking up the phone. And then for step three, I'll teach you all how to make a family tree uh, or a scrapbook. So something where you can kind of collect information about your family. And then step four is finding an object uh, that means something to you that's maybe been passed down from your family. So uh, again, I'm sure you could ask your caregiver at home uh, what you can find there. And then lastly is sharing your family story. So uh, those are the five steps. Again, we will be focusing in on one and three today. So for step one, I thought it could be kind of fun. I know I asked you all what your favorite family recipe is. I thought it could be fun to kick off this video by sharing um, a tradition, a family recipe that's been shared uh, in my family uh, for years and years and years. So something really unique about my family that may be different from yours uh, is that my family is Jewish. So while your family or uh, potentially was celebrating Easter last week, um, my family was celebrating Passover. So um, I thought it could be fun to share um, a super easy, really fast uh, Passover recipe um, that you could even try if you wanna try buying some matzah uh, at the grocery store. Uh, so I'm just gonna flip around here so you all can see me as I prepare this. Again, it's super easy. Um, you just need a few ingredients. So uh, today I'm gonna show you really quickly how to make uh, fried matzah is a traditional uh, Passover uh, breakfast that my mom would make me uh, all the time growing up. Every year on Passover, it was a family tradition that I got to look forward to eating uh, during breakfast. So all you need for this is matzah. Um, for those who aren't familiar with matzah, it's kind of like a giant saltine cracker. Uh, it's bread made without yeast because during the eight-day celebration of Passover, in Hebrew referred to as Pesach, uh, we don't eat um, things that are made with um, yeast. We only eat unleavened bread. Um, so this is what it looks like. It looks like one giant saltine cracker. I prefer the salted kind, personal preference. Uh, and so to make fried matzah, again, this is a breakfast dish. I'm just gonna turn on my pan. It's super easy, everyone. It takes literally two minutes. You take your matzah, you break it up into just big chunks here, into some warm water. And then you just let it soak just for a minute. You don't want it to get too soggy. Um, and then you have one cracked egg. So I already cracked my egg, but I do need to scramble it. So you just need water, one piece of matzo, or you could double or triple the recipe, which I normally do. But that was my last piece of matzo. Uh, one egg, and then a teaspoon of cinnamon sugar. Um, and yeah, so you'll just let the matzah soak for a minute as your pan's heating up. You just need a little bit of spritz, so you'll spray it in there. Uh, and if you did celebrate a holiday last week, maybe it was Passover, maybe it was Easter, I would love to hear about a family tradition that you participated in last week, even while social distancing. So if you did celebrate uh, Easter, did you do an egg hunt? Uh, what did you do to make it special? Uh, I would love to hear, no, and I'm sure other people who are watching now would learn as well. So again, um, I'm making this because my mom would make this all the time for me when I was little. It makes me feel like I'm back at home in Chicago. Um, so now that my matzah has toasted for, or pardon, uh, sogged for just a minute, uh, I'm gonna actually gonna scoop it out 
now that my pan's getting nice and hot on medium high. And I just use my hand, but that's the kind of cook I am. So, <laughs> so yeah, you'll just plop it in your pan until it starts to saute. And I'll move my computer so you can see it. So again, we just got our matzo, which is unleavened bread, um, a little bit soggy. And now we're toasting it in the pan. And I can show you what it looks like here. Boop. There it is. There's the matzo. And so kind of what I'm making, it's kind of honestly like a Jewish French toast. <laughs> That's how I like to uh, think of it. Oh, so someone, Aaron wrote, we did an egg hunt and ate ham and cheesy Tito's. That sounds amazing. That sounds so yummy. So as your matzo is cooking, you're just going to kind of smoosh it around a little bit. It doesn't need to be perfect. And then you'll take your scrambled egg and you'll pour it uh, into the pan. And you might want to turn the heat down a little bit because you don't want your egg to cook too quick. And again, I, one of the reasons why I love this recipe is just because it's so fast. So you can see my egg starting to cook in there with the matzo. So if you like a more savory breakfast, you can just salt and pepper this bad boy once the egg cooks. And egg, if you aren't familiar with cooking eggs, um, eggs cook so fast. So um, this is a really, really quick breakfast recipe. So yeah, if you like savory, I just recommend flavoring with salt and pepper. Um, and so you can see that's done now. It looks really tasty. Get you a good aerial shot. There's our fried matzo. And if you like to go a little bit sweeter for breakfast, which I prefer, I'm going to sprinkle cinnamon sugar uh, on top of my fried matzo. So um, that's a quick family recipe I wanted to share with you all to kick this off today. And so I'm going to flip that around uh, to tell you just a little bit more about my family story. So as I mentioned, um, my uh, family is Jewish and and my grandmother, and I brought some pictures, so I hope you're excited to look along with me. Um, okay, so these are both of my grandmothers. I'm so fortunate and lucky to still have both of them around today. And as you can see, that's me. I think I literally look exactly the same. I still wear tie-dye like all the time. Um, so this grandmother uh, right here, this is my grandma Esther, that's my dad's mom, and this is my grandma Merle, that's my mom's mom. So a really interesting thing about grandma Esther is that when she was uh, 11 years old, she uh, was living in Poland with her family, and at that time, um, people who were Jewish weren't really welcome uh, in Poland or really much of Northern Europe. So my grandma Esther and her grandmother actually came over to the United States. And if it never happened, uh, my family tree would have never grown. So I printed out a map of the US here, or pardon, of the world here, so you can kind of see how far uh, my family had to travel just to come to the United States. So, and this was in 1942. So when my grandma was 11 years old in 1942, she and her grandmother tra uh, traveled all the way here uh, to the U.S. and they wound up in Brooklyn, New York, which is where my grandma spent the most of her childhood. So you can see here, I circled Poland on the map and you can see that they traveled all the way to New York. Now, something kind of interesting is that my entire family lives in Chicago. So I actually moved to Cincinnati in 2016. Um, and I figured I would show uh, a couple pictures here and I'll, I'll kind of get back to how they wound up in Chicago with my grandma's story. So um, my grandma at the time was living in New York and she started to learn English. So she didn't grow up uh, knowing English. She only knew Polish and Yiddish, which is a, a Jewish language. Um, and so she, um, you know, started going to grade school and started learning the language. And eventually when she she was about 20 years old. Um, she uh, got proposed to by a man uh, who also lived in New York, but she wasn't sure if um, she loved him as much as she did. Uh, so uh, she and her girlfriend actually went down to Florida to help my grandma think about this proposal and see if 
this was someone that she wanted to be with. And while she was in Florida, uh, she met uh, a man named Jerome Hollander, uh, who is my grandfather. So while she went down to Florida with a girlfriend to think about this engagement, uh, she actually wound up meeting her future husband while she was on vacation. So uh, she went back to New York and she broke it off with the gentleman that she was seeing. And then she wound up moving to Chicago where the rest of my family came together. So it's kind of a funny little story and uh, always uh, amuses me. Um, and so uh, it, it's really special to me to have a, you know, a grandmother who uh, is an immigrant. So she moved all the way here from Europe and I feel very connected uh, to that story. And I'm sure a lot of you also have relatives who came here from other places as well. Um, because at one time, um, everyone immigrated to America. Um, so I highly recommend that you get in touch with your family members to see where they may have immigrated from. Um, now, so I did bring a few pictures just to kind of show you the rest of my family. And I, I also wanted to show you my family tree. And then I'm gonna give you some tips for how you can make your very own family tree. Um, so this is my family tree. <laughs> um, hopefully you all can see that. So I started at the top with my grandparents. So um, Esther is the one I just told you about. Um, so Esther's the one who moved from Poland uh, and she is the one who met my grandma Mary when she was in Florida. And then my grandma Merle is in the photo that I showed you. And just as a reminder, I'm talking about these awesome ladies right here. <laughs> so uh, it looks like some people like the tree. Well, I'm gonna show you how to make a really awesome tree too, so don't you worry. Um, okay, and so then my grandma, I'm trying to figure out how to angle this appropriately. Okay, so Grandma Esther and my grandpa Jerry had two sons. So they had my uncle Evan, which is my dad's brother. And then they had my dad. And so he's right in the middle here. That's Gene. Um, and then my, oh gosh, I'm going backwards. My grandma Merle uh, and my papa Howard, they had also two children, which I think is kind of interesting. My family has a lot of twos. I know a lot of families have like twins or threes, but my family is often a family of twos. Um, so they had my uncle Scott and my mom Karen. And then, uh, so something interesting that I did with my tree, I'll, again, I'll give you some different suggestions for how you can make your tree. Um, so I put everyone in this cloud shape who were directly from my family line. Now I put people in boxes who married into the family because they have their very own family tree that I knew I couldn't fit on this poster. But maybe you want to pressure as much of your family as possible and so you might need a piece of paper that's bigger or maybe twice the size so that you can expand and include the family members of the folks who married into your family so i, I kind of want to show up a couple pictures so i put my parents at the center uh, of the poster so again uh my parents are karen and jean i love them i'm gonna say hi if they're watching um so this is my beautiful mom uh, I got from her my love for animals. See, as you can see, she's up close with a really beautiful, funky bird video. And then my dad, I'll put this down for a minute. My dad, whose name is Gene, loves to explore. So this is a photo of my dad uh, scuba diving. He loves to picture. So I think from the two of them combined, I got my love for animals and my love for adventure. So I definitely am my parents' child. Um, and then, so as I mentioned, I have a family of two. So my mom has one brother, my dad has one brother, my grandma had one sister, um, and I have one brother. So I have a couple pictures here of me and my brother. Oh, and I also wanted to share, this is a picture of my mom and dad together. They're so cute. Again, they love to travel. So that's a picture of them, Karen and Jean. Um, and then this is a picture of me and my brother. Uh, when I was a little baby, my brother was so cute, little curly head. So, so that's me and my brother. So I just have one older brother. He's two years older than me. And then I thought it'd be fun also to show you a picture again. Tie dye. This is my jam. 
but this is me when I uh, was in Disney World with my family when I was uh, probably around your age. Uh, so that's us in Disney World. Again, family loves to take family tree that they love to do that. Um, so as you can see, if you go back to my family tree, um, my parents, Karen and Jean, oops, were there. My, uh, I'm right here, I'm Marissa, for those who are maybe hopping on late. And my brother's name is Josh, so I showed you him. And now my family tree has grown because I am engaged to, oops, Bobby. And so for those also, so I know I did branches connecting the um, parents to children. And then I also did like a, a jagged branch or not a jagged, but like a striped branch to show who's uh, partnered with who. So Bobby is my partner. Um, he's upstairs right now. And we don't have any kids, but we do have a ton of animals. So I have to show this with you all. So these are our babies. <laughs> so three cats. Uh, we have Louie, Mago, Amy, and then for those of you who have maybe watched my Junior Animal Habitats badge video, an eight-year-old iguana named Al. Uh, so that's my iguana. And then we have a goldfish named Henry. So I thought it would be fun to keep growing our family tree by including our pets. So um, that's just something that I wanted to do. So if you have pets, that might be something kind of fun. Um, but it's up to you. Maybe um, you have some family friends that you consider like family and maybe you want them on your family tree. It's totally up to you. Um, so again, this is my family tree. I'm going to show you a quick way to get started with this. Um, oh, and then I also have, I, I meant to show, I have pictures of my family too. So this is a picture of me and my fiance, Bobby. I'm trying to angle it. We're being goofballs. We had just moved to Cincinnati. We're down at the Roebling Bridge. We were having a ton of fun. And we just got our third cat, Amy. So I actually don't have any pictures of her to show. She's upstairs right now. And then, but these are my two boy cats, Louie and Mago, cuties. And then I figured I'd show a picture of my lizard from when she was a little baby. To give some perspective, she's three feet long. But this is Al when she was a little baby. So cute. She fit on my finger. She now is too big to sit on my shoulder. She's huge. So those are our little uh, animal babies. And then I also just printed out a couple pictures of my cousins because looking at these make me smile. So this is my dad's side of the family. So I've got a bunch of my cousins there. I'm right here. Oops, on this side in the pink. I'm really young here. And then I'm even younger in this one with my mom's side of the family. Uh, I'm the little baby sitting in my grandma Merle's lap, if you remember her from earlier. So kind of fun. I, I don't know about you, but I love looking through old photos. It makes me feel really uh, nostalgic. I'm not sure what that word means. Um, it makes me feel connected to my family. It makes me miss my family. And I, I love that feeling. I love uh, looking back and, and wanting to see my family. Um, and for me, as I mentioned, you know, what's kind of also crazy, going back to my family tree, I, I mentioned that everyone in my family lives in Chicago. And when I say everyone, I'm not kidding. So all of these people, everyone up here, they all live in Chicago. And I'm the only one right here who lives in Cincinnati. Now, fortunately for me, not included on the rest of my family tree, I'm so lucky to have Bobby's family. So Bobby has two amazing parents and uh, an older sister, and she has already started her own family. So I've got a niece and nephew from that side. Uh, so really fortunate to have his family here that I feel very connected to and like they're part of my family as well. Um, so in getting started with your family tree, what I recommend doing is starting with something as simple as a piece of paper and a pen. Um, because you may need your caregiver's help with this. You might need to uh, ask for some help. I know I actually just called my grandma Merle this morning because I was kind of curious. You know, I knew that my grandma Esther had come from Poland and I've never really talked about my other grandma, uh, where her family's from. And she let me know that her family was also from uh, Northern Europe, uh, Poland and Russia, which I never knew before. So you never know until you ask. And especially if you are fortunate enough to still have uh, grandparents who are around, uh, I would I would reach out to them and ask because they have some amazing stories and um, you know it's up to you to pass those down you know and tell those stories. So um, again, I just have a pen and paper here, 
Now, how I prefer to work on the family tree, which is easiest for me, is I, I actually work backwards. So, um, and you can do your tree either way. So if you wanna put um, like your older relatives at the bottom and have the web go up, you can reverse this. I just did, I just did this because that's how I chose to, but, but Patrick, you can make it look like however you want. Um, so with that, again, I like to work backwards. So um, I started with myself. Um, so I wrote me and then I connected it to my brother, Josh. And then I went down and I wrote mom and dad. And then I went down and, well, and, I, and then I kind of paused and I said, well, my dad's got his brother, my uncle, Evan. And then she's, he's married to my aunt Dawn. My mom's got uncle Scott and he's married to my aunt Audrey. So I worked backwards. Uh, so you can do whatever works for you. But I started with me and my brother and then I went down to my parents. And then if I kept going down, I would do my grandma and papa for my mom and then my grandma Esther and uh, grandpa Jerry for my dad. Um, so do whatever works for you. But again, you may need a caregiver to help you out and, and um, figure out all these connections. And you might want to consider too, you know, how far back can you go? How far back um, do you want to go? So again, I just went back to my parents' parents. Um, and this is how big my tree was, just doing my parents' parents. And again, I did not include the families from my aunts who married into the family. My tree would have been a lot bigger if I had done that. So that's something for you to consider as well. Another really fun way, instead of doing kind of a traditional family tree, even though I really love this, um, another fun way to kind of capture your family story um, is by making a scrapbook. So uh, this is kind of a fallen art. Uh, I really love this. Um, I'm a big, my family was always big into scrapbooking. So this is a really big scrapbook, but I started this a while ago. It's a scrapbook of me and Bobby, my fiance. So we met, you know, five years ago, five and a half years ago. I don't even remember. It's been a while. Um, and so this is a fun way to capture uh, different pictures, you know, from your life. So I showed you that picture earlier and I actually had scrapbooked it and some pictures of Cincinnati from when we first moved here. So, you know, with your scrapbook, you can write down notes on your pictures and, and write down your family stories on there or things that they like, things that they don't like, things that they love to celebrate. So uh, that's definitely a fun option for you if you wanna go um, a more crafty way. Uh, and this is fun because you can get to cut up and glue paper and things like that. Uh, for this, um, I just used marker. Um, I used pencil first to trace everything. And then I just used marker and I actually used watercolor because that's what I had at my house. But you could do colored pencil or crayons um, or whatever it is that you want. Um, and again, I'm, I'm you may have a really small tree. You may have a really big tree. It just depends. Every family is unique and different. No families are the same. Um, so that's a little bit about my family. And just a couple things before we sign off here is um you know for step uh uh four excuse me um this is again I'm, I'm a super nostalgic person so i love feeling connected to my family through different objects so step four is to um find an object that's been passed down through your family so i actually have two i have two um from the two grandmas i showed you earlier so my grandma esther um the one who moved here from poland her side of the family, I actually have a plant that is my great, great grandfather's. Um, it is an Easter cactus and it is from my great, great grandfather whose name was Manny. Um, it blooms once a year, it gives me one flower and this is it. So believe it or not, this cactus is over a hundred years old and it's very special to me. Makes me feel very connected to that side of the family. So that's one object. And then from my other side of the family, I have this necklace. So as I mentioned, I am Jewish and I love that this necklace has the Star of David on it. This was given to me by my grandmother, Merle, and it was given to her by her grandmother. So really special grandmother to granddaughter tradition. Um, so maybe one day I'll have the opportunity to continue passing this along. Who knows? Um, but again, very special to me. I love that I have something representing both sides of my family from my mom's side and my dad's side. So um, I hope that this has inspired you to do some investigating on family. Uh, I'm excited to see what uh, connections you find, what traditions you find. 
uh, what makes you feel really connected to your family. So as I mentioned, um, just to kind of wrap things up here, today we have been working on the Brownie My Family Story Badge. And we explored family stories. So I told you a little bit about uh, my grandmother moving here from Poland years and years ago. Yes, it was 1942, it's a long time ago. Um, so I told you a little bit about her and how my whole family came to be in Chicago. Uh, and I didn't mention the rest of my family was already living in Chicago. So um, my mom is already living there. Uh, and then for step two, know where your family is from. So um, part of that could be uh, figuring out what countries take your family back to. Again, I kind of meant, uh, I showed you my fried matzah recipe. So um, that is representative of, you know, my family's history with being Jewish. Uh, and for step three, make a story tree. So I gave you some tips and tricks for how you can make your own story tree or your own scrapbook. Uh, just use whatever you've got around the house, you know, be creative and have fun with it. Uh, I expect to see some pictures posted in the comments after uh, this video or pardon in the event discussion so you all can show me your family trees. I love learning about other people's families. And then so for step four, as we just mentioned, finding an object that uh, has been passed down through your family. So something really special and unique to your family. And then step five is just share, share your story. So uh, maybe you want to design your own family crest or maybe you want to do a family potluck once all this is up. Um, or maybe you want to become pen pals uh, with someone in your family. The, you've got lots of choices here. So the world's your oyster. If you enjoyed this video and you are not a Girl Scout, you can go to gswo.org join to learn more about membership. And this 